The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. Welcome to Kingdom Connection. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know God has a word in store that I believe is gonna lift you and encourage you and give you strength and bless you in remarkable ways. You know, the church is on a comeback. The body of Christ is on a comeback. And I believe today's message is going to proclaim in your life that God is able to bring you a comeback. Open your ears, open your mind. He's ready to speak. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to open them with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter. Dead flies putrefy the perfume's ointment and cause it to give a foul odor. So does a little folly to one respected for wisdom and honor. I want you to notice the first part of that verse. Dead flies putrefy the ointment. That word ointment would, would be in our vernacular, the anointing oil. It was made out of five principles that were given in the book of Exodus, a certain recipe that God gave the measurements that made the anointing oil. I think we need to understand that the Bible calls Satan the Lord of the flies. That's one of his biblical names. Beelzebub, Lord of the flies. And he said, there's this, these flies and they get in the oil and they make what should be a beautiful fragrance have a stench. There's certain Christians, the way that they present Jesus, instead of attracting people, they repel people. You ever met any Christian like that? It's almost like, People run like roaches when they walk in the room because they, they just don't have, something's not right. I just got interested and I started looking and went online and started looking for sermons about flies and started researching and listening to everything I could and reading everything I could. And I just want to give you what I think is a spin on this text that there are certain Christians who, who can get in the, the ointment and it's not any, any more attractive. And I found out that there's a fly family. For example, did you know that there are butterflies and the, uh, the butterfly is the largest of the fly family. It has external beauty. But what was interesting it is the weakest member of the fly family. It looks beautiful outwardly, but it's very weak internally. Externally, everything looks gorgeous and beautiful. Internally, it is devoured by smaller bu bugs. It has no inner strength. Samson had great times when the spirit came on him and he did powerful, mighty things. But then he laid his head in the lap of Delilah. He was a butterfly. Everybody would have looked and said, what a powerful man of God. What a powerful, powerful person who's walking with God in the anointing. But the truth is flies got in and something internally was not happening that was happening. And it's a lot of show, but not enough glow on the inside. Then, interestingly, I found, found another member of the fly. I'm just going to give you three. But I found one that they called the robber fly. I thought, well, I got to preach that one. <laughs> little fly. It's a little fly with big wings that makes a lot of noise. I couldn't believe it. And what it does is it lets the other flies gather food and go back to get some more, and it will swoop in. And they said it makes a lot of noise, a whistling noise, all the time except when it's stealing. And then it gets real quiet. <laughs> and there are robber flies in the church. Malachi chapter 3 said, will a man rob God? 
He said, but you've robbed me in tithes and in offerings. And God said, but prove me in this area. He didn't leave it in a negative. He said, prove me in this area and see if you do what I tell you to do. If I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, you won't have room enough to receive it. It'll spill over and spill over and spill over and spill over. But then the third one was the one that really got my interest in the fly family. The mosquito is part of the family of flies. You know what they said? And this is, I don't know why I didn't know this. I guess I knew it. I just don't think about it. I often say a mosquito bit me. We say mosquito, I have a mosquito bite, but technically you don't. They don't have any teeth. They don't have any fangs. All a mosquito has is a long tongue. And it's like a needle. And it goes in. The favorite hymn of the mosquito is nothing but the blood. <laughs> and they stick their tongue in and they're after one thing. Um, now listen to me. I'm going somewhere, I promise. The mosquito wants to remove the blood. The mosquito wants to take the blood, and he uses his tongue to do it. A sharp tongue like a pen, like a needle, and he withdraws the blood that covers. A talebearer reveals secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. A mosquito will draw, uncover, take off the blood, take away the blood, and then go over and infect somebody else with what they got from that one. And if we're not careful, we can do that. But there's a much deeper issue here that I want you to see. Love covers mosquitoes spread. Isaiah said, if I'm going to have a tongue, give me the tongue of the learned. I pray this prayer almost every day of my life. I cannot remember hardly a day that I don't pray the prayer from the book of Isaiah that says, give me the tongue of the learned that I might speak a word in season to him that is weary. It's one of the greatest prayers you could pray over your mouth to say, God, I don't want to have a poison tongue. I don't want to lift the blood off people and then take it and spread everything I hear about hurting broken people. But Lord, if you're going to use, fill me with the fire of the Holy Spirit so that my tongue is something that brings people a word in season. I'm trying to say to you that sin and mosquitoes have something in common. They both want to take away the blood. And it's the blood of Jesus Christ that draws us near to God. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And sin, like a mosquito, is trying to lift the blood and bring disease and death to our families, to our marriages, to our children, to our dreams, to our hopes. Galatians 5 and 9 said, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Just a little bitty tiny thing. It's just a little thing. But if you allow it to set up a breeding ground in your life, it will lay its eggs and produce and take and take and try to lift the blood. When we begin to understand that it has to be intentional to fight against that which wants to lift the blood and take the blood. They talked about online what would happen, what America or the world would look like if mosquito control was not exercised. They gave a picture of the world and they said, if, if it's not intentionally limited and controlled, health issues on apocalyptic levels would take place. They said that it would be an annoyance, like we wouldn't believe we could go nowhere. The whole world would be filled if we did not purposely and intentionally fight those insects that are trying to withdraw the blood. Negative impact on the world's economy. Well, I want to ask you a question. What would the church look like 
without sin control. And let me ask you a more personal question. What will your home look like and what will your life look like unless you intentionally learn how to fight and burn incense in the morning? It's so amazing to me. If I'll just be consistent in the word, pastor, how many chapters do you read a day? It doesn't doesn't even matter. It's not about that. It's just taking the time in the morning. God, here I am and just speak to me. It's not how long you do it. It's just the consistency of it. Morning, night, morning. Just reach over and pray. Plead the blood over your family. Plead the blood over your marriage. Just grab those children before they go to bed and pray with them. You would be amazed how that environment in the middle of a swamp becomes comes mosquito, not completely ever will we ever get so holy that anything we can do can kill all mosquitoes. And you'll have a dot here and there every once in a while, but they will not cover you. You won't be their smorgasbord. Take a praise break and I'll keep preaching. I'm going somewhere, I promise. You know that every year, this time of the year, they have a campaign called Fight the Bite. And they encourage people to remind people to be aware. That's what I'm preaching today. You don't just play with sin. You just don't let stuff get in your family and in your life and in your all in your home and all in your life. You don't play with that. That's why we come to church. We come to church to remind one another. That's why we sing. That's why we pray. Be sober. Be vigilant. Fight the bite. Get your family up and come to church. You know what you're doing sitting here listening to me preach? You're fighting the bite. You know what you're doing when you're opening this book? You know what you're doing when you're having prayer? You turn the TV or the computer off and you just talk about the Lord a little bit. You are fighting the bite. The Bible compares water to the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow a river of living water. And if you go on these resorts, what you will see is rivers and you will see water works and you will see water fountains, but you'll never see just stagnant water. Water has to always be flowing or you will begin to attract that which wants to lift and take the blood. What I'm preaching to you is I'm concerned after a pandemic that there are millions of Christians who have become stagnant in their walk with Jesus. We become stagnant and stale. And that's where sin begins to breed and reproduce and take over. The best way that we can make sure we're not breeding ground for the eggs of the enemy to be implanted into our family and into our home, the lies of Satan, the best way that we can combat that is to have a move of the Spirit. It's not about just coming to church and hearing a talk. Something's got to happen. You you can't become a butterfly Christian who just says, yes, I go to church and I go. If you don't move, the the eggs are going to get planted on still water. We need the moving of the Holy Spirit in this church. I don't want to become a professional preacher. I don't want to ever get up here and lean on some gifting that God has given me. We need the moving of the Holy Spirit. We need the flow in our worship. We need the flow in our preaching. And we need the flow in the pews where we actually get moved and say, I'm going to do more than sit here and take it in. When the word of God gets to going, something starts moving. And then it's up to you to respond. The four lepers in 2 Kings said, why sit we here till we die? And I feel like preaching now. Here I go. I'm sorry. If you came to visiting, get ready. Here it comes. Free chapel is not a still water church. This thing was not born in some dead, dry, denominational, religious setting. If we ever lose the moving of the Holy Spirit, we don't have anything to offer a lost it. If we're just like them, we don't have anything to offer. But boy, if we will let the river flow, if we will let the river cleanse, if we will let the river heal, 
I want the flow back. I don't want steel, stagnant water full of mosquito eggs. Acts 17 said in him, watch this, three things. We live, we move, and we have our being. Sandwiched between we live and we have our being is we move. If you're not having a moving of the Holy Spirit in your life, how long has it been since you got and felt a move of the Holy Spirit on you that you were moved. You were moved with compassion. You were moved by a hunger for the presence of God. What keeps mosquitoes away is the flowing water. What keeps sin away, what keeps sin held at bay, it's applying the blood of Jesus and praise and worship and burning of the incense morning and evening. That keeps it away. But also refusing to allow the move to die in us. The moving of the river of the Holy Spirit. The moving of the water at the pool of Bethesda. The Bible said there were sick people all around and the angel came and when he troubled the water, it was still and no miracles happened. But when he troubled the water, he took his sword and just stirred the water and the moving of the water produced. They put a man in who was paralyzed and he was instantly healed. Notice that the miracle was in the moving. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but man, when you come to church and all you do is this right here the whole time. You know what you are? You're a stale pool. I don't, I don't mean to get in your business, but really I do. I'm a pastor. This is what I have to do. I sense this church needs a fresh moving of the Holy Spirit. We need it. I need it. You need it. I can't make it off yesterday. I can't live off what God used to do. He is here now. He is a miracle worker now. He can help you now. He can set you free now. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, learn, I yearn for a move of the Holy Spirit. Tell somebody beside you there's miracle in the movement. We can't, we can't get satisfied. We can't get complacent. We can't live of just coming to church and going through another service. God never let this church get like that. He said, your body is my building. Your body is my temple. Be intentional about not letting the enemy set up little puddles with our steel water because it may seem like a little thing, but a little leaven leavens a whole lump. And I want you to be intentional to fight that bite. I want you to be intentional to stand up against what you know is wrong. And I can't promise you if you've got a, an addiction or something that you won't ever, ever, ever be tempted ever again. That's not going to happen till we get to heaven. And all of us have that, by the way. All of us. Nobody in here is walking around. Those little things coming out of your back are not angels' wings. That's your shoulder blades. Don't act so holy, you butterfly. Yes, preach it to them. And you're weak inside. And when you're weak, my point is... That's when you need to get fresh sacrifice. That's when you need to say, God, I need a move. I've got to have a fresh move. The thing that I want to close with is when I read Ecclesiastes 10, it said dead flies are in the ointment and I got a streak of joy that went through me. I've never seen it like this. I always read that as kind of like a negative thing, and I even preached it at the beginning as a negative thing. But the more I thought about it, dead flies in the ointment. The thing that I can guarantee will kill the flies. Every one of them in the fly family is fresh oil. 
the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the anointed one. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he is anointed. And I feel that anointing here this morning. I feel it. I feel it. Psalms 92. But my horn you will exalt like a wild oaks. One translation said like a unicorn. So that don't mean nothing to you. But here, I have been anointed. Come on, say it out loud, big and bold. I have been anointed with what? Fresh oil. And what does the oil do to the flies? They get If they do mess up and come in here, their wings get in it and they get sticky. And before you know it, they're wallowing around. And before you know it, they die. Oh, I believe, I believe that the anointing destroys the yoke, the prophet Isaiah said, and lifts the heavy burden. Don't you want it? I close with this, I promise. This is the last closing. Psalms 23. <laughs> Thou anointest my head with oil. What does that mean? When the sheep would graze, they would eat, and the flies would fly around. And if they're not careful, they lay their eggs in their ears. The mosquitoes would lay their eggs, the flies, the mosquitoes would lay their eggs in their ears and it would drive them insane. So the shepherd when he sees one struggling, will take oil and pour it on the head because there was something in the oil that was repugnant to those insects and particularly to serpents because their nose was down and it would cause them to back up. That is the picture that the psalmist David said, he anoints your head, your thinking. Don't we need, don't we realize the battleground? We're fighting depression, discouragement, fear, worry, anxiety. But the Lord says, I promise you, I've got the weapon that kills all those flies. It's called, I shall anoint your head with oil. Your mind can have peace. You don't have to be bound by depression and fear and discouragement in the past and guilt and shame. But he anoints you with something that kills the flies, dead flies in the ointment. Well, you know the Bible teaches us to call on the name of the Lord and he'll answer us and show us great and mighty things that we know not of. Isn't that wonderful to know that we have a God who not only hears our prayers, but he exceeds our prayers and he wants to meet your needs. Whatever they are in your life, no matter how big or small, he cares. He hears the cry of his children. So right now, if you need healing, if you need a miracle in your finances, if you need God's help on your job, one of your children or some situation in your family is just overwhelming you and you don't know where to turn and what to do, I believe prayer is absolutely the invitation for God's supernatural power to come into your life. And I'm gonna pray for you. you. I got this one, you don't even have to pray, you just receive this prayer. Lord Jesus, I pray today for every person watching this program by divine appointment. I pray today in the name of Jesus that healing would flow into their body, enough is enough. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity and sickness and constant tiredness and weariness and physical ailments. Lord, we claim miraculous healing now, supernatural healing now. But he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace, which includes the healing of the mind and the emotions was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. And Lord, I thank you today for those who are watching who need 
deliverance, either in their life or someone they know from addictions and bondages, depression, discouragement, even suicide, defeat, bondage. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke and I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every person who's struggling in any of these areas. Yes, he loves you. No, he will not give up on you. Yes, he will lift you out of the muck and the mire and the pain and the hurt. He's doing it even now. Receive it. Hallelujah. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. And just say right where you are, Jesus, save me. Jesus, heal me. Come into my heart. Come into my home. Come into my life. The miracle has begun in Jesus' name. I tell you now, I feel faith for that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord right where you are. And if you prayed that prayer, pick up the phone and dial the number that's on the screen or go online and send us an email and declare your victory today. We'd love to hear from you. It's an encouragement to our whole team. God bless you and we'll see you next time on Kingdom Connection. God's promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has always been a promised land. Today, the Jewish people living in Israel are now standing on that same promise. But many of the Jewish families living along the Gaza Strip in Israel face ceaseless militant attacks. These families stand firm and defend their land because they know it's God's promise to them. God also promised a special blessing for those who blessed Israel in Genesis 12. You can experience that blessing and help fulfill biblical prophecy in the Holy Land when you partner with Genesis and Franklin Media Ministries in our newest effort to construct fortified bomb shelters for this region in Israel. Each one of the fortified shelters are strategically located to provide maximum safety during these senseless attacks. As our thank you for your gift of $50 or more, we want to bless you with the Healing Tree Bundle. Through this uplifting resource bundle, you're going to discover the wonderful blessings God has for you. Our thank you for your gift of $500 or more. We want to bless you with a Healing Tree gift set featuring Jensen's uplifting book, Acres of diamonds. Our thank you for your gift of $1,000 or more. We want to bless you with the Healing Tree Collection. To thank you for your generosity towards this ministry and your heart for the Jewish people, we want to plant a tree in your honor in Israel and send you a beautiful Comfort My People coin made with soil from Jerusalem, as well as the many other resources in this Power Pack collection. Your gift will save lives and help fulfill biblical prophecy today. Visit us online. And he said to Moses, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. This program has been sponsored by friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin and thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Your prayers and financial support make these programs possible. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv.